just a few additional questions. I just want to clarify something you just testified to, to Senator Cruz. I think you just said that your view is that, that paying illegal immigrants $450,000 or more, million more per family, million eight, that that is not a pull factor. In other words, it wouldn't encourage more illegal immigration, right? You said not a pull factor, your words. May I have the opportunity to answer this question? Well, I just want to be, you said not a pull factor, right? I couldn't quite hear you at the time, so I just want to be sure that's what you said. The, the settlement payment of the federal tort claim charge arising from a family separation effected under the prior administration's zero tolerance policy would not be a pull factor. That is my testimony. That is your, t understood. I think that's news, that you think that these payments to illegal immigrants would not be a pull factor, would not, that paying them would not encourage more illegal immigration. That, that's news. Thank you for that. I, I want to ask you about uh, something else that's been in the news. Back in March, when the president said that, that uh, Vice President Harris would be his border czar, he said she's the most qualified person to help in stemming the movement of so many folks, stemming the migration to our southern border. That's President Biden. Do you report to her? Uh, Senator, I uh, report to the Vice President and the President, and your question misstates uh, the facts. The but President did not appoint the Vice President to be the border czar. Um, he no. uh, um, asked her to lead the effort in addressing the root causes of irregular migration. Those ah. are two very different things. Ah, I see. So is she working closely with you on that uh, Im important endeavor? Uh, How often do you meet with her? Uh, I am uh, certainly in close touch with the vice president. This How often do you meet on this subject? Uh, I've met uh, with the vice president um, more than a handful of times. But w more than a handful? Well, so what's that when mean? I'm Six or seven I'm times in the last year? Oh, no. Uh, first of all, I have not been in office for a year, uh, Senator. Um, uh, secondly, I am in close touch. So she's very involved in the department's policies and in, and in, in, in what's happening at the southern border. You've traveled to the border together? Um, Senator, allow me to repeat my testimony that the vice president's focus is on addressing the root cause. I, I heard your testimony. My, I'm asking you a question. My question is, do you travel to the border together? Or are, you, are you devising policies together? Um, I have traveled uh, to the border once with the vice president, El Paso, Texas, so that she could see firsthand uh, the challenges that we face. And has she been part of your, your policies to your decision to end the Remain in Mexico policy, to end the public charge rule, uh, to change the ICE guidance? H has she been part of those decisions? I, I have not consulted with the Vice President directly about those policies. So what is she doing exactly? Um, you said she's not the border czar, that that's, that's not her role. We were wrong about that. She's not doing anything like that. She's doing something very different is what your testimony is, but she's, you're not actually consulting with her on any policy. So what is it that she's doing exactly? Uh, Senator, as I have uh, repeatedly testified, she is focused on addressing the root causes of irregular migration in the context of the migration challenge. How's that been going? Um, that is a, um, we are advancing considerably. And in fact, I am contributing to that effort. I have you think met, the policies are working? I, I have met with the leadership in Mexico, in Guatemala, in El Salvador, in Honduras, and other countries to address. And those efforts are working? That's been successful? Oh, this is a, um, uh, this is a Time's process expired. Uh, that takes time and delivers an enduring solution. Senator Grassley. Uh, Mr. Secretary, what specific criminal conduct would cause an Afghan evacuee parole to be terminated? Um, uh, Senator, it is um, uh, conduct in violation of parole will require us to conduct an individualized um, examination, understand the facts and circumstances of the violation, and um, can you name we, the, will revoke, can, uh, we will revoke parole. I, I'm According. after the type of criminal activity that would uh, cause uh, the parole to be terminated. Just give me a couple, three examples. It could be, um, it could be anything. It could be. Uh, okay, then let's, uh, let's, let me go to the next question then. What's the status of an Afghan national housed at Fort Bliss who were involved in an alleged attack on a female service member on September the 19th? Has that parole been terminated? Uh, so, uh, Senator, I am not familiar with the, the, the case of which you speak. I do know um, that an individual who sexually assaulted 
an individual on another individual on a base is being criminally prosecuted and immigration detainer has been posted as well so that immigration enforcement proceedings removal proceedings can follow the consequences of the criminal prosecution so so they will be removed then um, I don't know specifically the name of the individual of which you speak um, but if we have the same case in mind the answer is affirmative okay now another case and this could be the one you're referring to as well I, I don't know which one you might have in mind but what's the current status of an Afghan national housed at Fort McCoy who was recently indicted for assaulting his wife has his parole been terminated and if so when would they be removed um, senator I don't know the, the name of the individual the case to which you refer it's hard for me to um, answer based on a generic description of the case but I will say this an individual who is charged criminally uh, an immigration detainer will be placed on that individual uh, pending the outcome of the criminal charges we will determine whether the immigration enforcement proceeding will in fact be pursued removal will be effected and of course parole uh, um, terminated okay last question uh, then another case like that what's the current status of an Afghan national flown out of Kabul and uh, transferred to the United States on August 26 who was convicted of felony rape in Idaho in 2010 so that's already conviction when will that person be removed and to what country will they be removed so uh, senator once again um, uh, I would need um, uh, further identifiers with respect to that case and I would be surprised okay. if um, yeah, if we discovered a prior conviction that parole was not already terminated, and I would be pleased to follow up with your office okay. on the facts of that case. Then on those three specific cases, or maybe it's four, I will make sure that you get a written request and answer those specific cases, because uh, if these people are criminally charged, we want them removed. Thanks, Senator Grassley. Senator Blackburn. And Mr. Secretary, thank you for allowing us a second round. During the first round, for uh, the record, I just want to say this. You wanted to challenge the stats that I was using, but the stats we're using are government stats, and they are accurate. But your attitude during that response was duly noted. I want to go to uh, part of the response you gave to Chairman Durbin when you talked about technology. I have talked with local law enforcement and Border Patrol on the border, and yes, they all say they have needed the wall, they need technology where the wall cannot go, uh, they need more agents and judges. But they have told me repeatedly that you all are removing technology from the border. So I would like to know if that is accurate or inaccurate. And if you want to come back to me with a response in writing, that would be helpful because technology is something they need for surveillance. Um, uh, Senator, um, I'd be very pleased to follow up with you because I'm not aware of the removal of technology. And let me also, if I may, um, as you referenced my attitude, and I hope I was unflinchingly respectful in response to your questions, well, and I apologize my... if you took it otherwise. I certainly did not mean to be. Let me return to a question. Senator Graham has asked you, and I notified your staff that I was going to ask you this question. The total number of illegal immigrants in this country with an NTA or an NTR and we would like to have that total number. And today you've been unable to provide that number. I have that number, if I may. Okay, that'd be wonderful. Um, uh, Senator, uh, between January 1st and October 31st of 2021, my data indicates that 210,465 uh, non-citizens were issued notices to appear and 95, I'm sorry, 
94,581 were issued notices to report. We've discontinued the practice of issuing notices to report. Okay, so we still have a lot of people that we do not know where they are in this country. If those are your numbers for what you have issued as NTAs and NTRs, but you also say there are 1.7 million people that have entered. In talking to Border Patrol, they think the gotaways number is high as 1.5 million. So, you know, it leads me to this number that you all say is in the country where you continue to use the 11 million number, and I know Yale and other universities in their studies have challenged that number. You, as head of DHS, should have a more appropriate number for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blackburn.